It's been a long road since the original kicker christened that first pickup truck. It kicked off a car audio renaissance, and upgrading your music in a vehicle was a requirement. America's Music Machine became live and loud over your passion, your emotion, your existence. Outdoors or on the open road, your sound is kicker. One more time. We're gonna do another one. We're gonna do this right this yeah. time. Weeka, weeka, weeka. Yeah. Check. I'm speedless. Fat. Camera adds 27 pounds. Okay. It just seems like a, a, a I know. rough it's, tra- it's, it's just kind of, yeah. This is Dave. And Kip. Come check us out. Bob. This is Kip. And Dave. And I got it wrong again. And we're gonna have to do this again because we both on a different trail. <laughs> Until then, this is Dave. And Kip. Come check us out. C- c- come check us out. Yeah. Wiki, 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 wiki. I think that's good. <laughs> just pick one. God, I hate the ending. There's no way to yeah. end this. Just say, come see us. Come, just come see us. And just come see us. So, come see us at the extra, Come see us at the two locations. God, I, it just seems so hard. <laughs> Delmar Hogwall up here, coming to you from outside Mildred's Bait Shop in Lingerie. I want to appreciate you all coming, giving a look-see in on the Kicker Unmasked show. Those folks at Kicker saw to the earth, make some of the finest gear ever tickle your ear. So, mighty fine of you to come take some time off and check them out. And remember, whether you're looking for night crawlers or nighties, Mildred's is your place. So once again, thank hey, what? Hey, son, put down that armadillo and get some pants on. Oh, my Lord, kids. Music is my passion, my livelihood, and it's in my DNA. My pals at Kicker Marine Audio gave me a chance to take the music what I love and listen to at home, on stage, and in the car, onto the water. Hi, this is Jason Bonham, and I want to say a big thank you to my friends at Kicker Audio for inspiring the songs and the stories behind the music that inspires America. Go overboard! The Kicker Quad Box is the most insane, ground-pounding, basshead-loving, preloaded subwoofer enclosure we have ever offered. It consists of four L7R 12-inch subwoofers. It has a total power handling of 2400 watts RMS, and it's tuned at an amazing 31 hertz. Here to tell us more about it is Kicker's very own Jeremy Brown. Hi, my name is Jeremy Brown. I've been with Kicker for 22 years. I work in the research and development department. In the early 2000s, I would run the Gates Bronco with shows like Daytona. We would do hair tricks, 48 10-inch subwoofers with 48 1,000-watt amplifiers. Really big build back in that day. 
We were able to develop some high output enclosures that were up above the 170 dB mark. We set a few world records with some of those enclosure designs and our woofers. We learned a lot about high output enclosure designs during that time, and we've been able to bring that to our product lines today. Within the last year, we introduced a new subwoofer enclosure with four L7R12s that we call the Quad Box. Our Quad Box is built out of three quarter inch birch. It's got a one and a half inch baffle and a one and a half inch bottom. We also use window frame bracing along with corner bracing to make the enclosure more rigid. We use a flared port to reduce port noise and increase port surface area. This type of vent design helps maximize output. We use the L7R 12 inch subwoofers because this allows you to use one KXA 2400.1 amplifier and you still get big bass with fewer upgrades to your charging system. The Kicker Quad Box is the base head starter kit. And if you're worried, it plays way below 40 hertz. Do not attempt to adjust this transmission. We have assumed control. The year is 1980. Music fights for its very survival in an acoustically desolate wasteland man calls automobile. Enter Steve Irby, a man whose love of music helped end this scourge forever and forge a path for modern car audio to follow. A humble musician with a passion for quality sound, Mr. Irby is a man who feels it is his destiny to provide a sanctuary for mobile audio. Welcome. Join us this evening as we venture back to the very night a young Steve Irby gains his inspiration to create the legacy we know today as Kicker Performance Audio. Though he does not realize it now, by this time tomorrow, Mr. Irby will have completed blueprints for the original kicker and champion the war against mobile audio inequality. Tonight, Mr. Irby's prayers will be answered as he begins his quest into the Q Zone. Kicker L7QB8. With roots dating back to Kicker's inception, Mr. Irby and his team of engineers have achieved an unrivaled level of design and functionality. With extraordinary base and a minimal footprint, the L7QB8 utilizes a seamless quarter inch extruded aluminum housing, allowing optimal internal air volume for the subwoofer. This exclusive design provides exceptional strength and stability. Like the original kicker, the L7QB8 incorporates a unique passive radiator to minimize required airspace while optimizing the efficiency and frequency response of the subwoofer. Opposite the passive radiator, the L7QB8 is equipped with the all new 8 inch L7 square subwoofer. The 2016 L7 features an aluminum basket for exceptional strength and thinned aluminum heat sinks for efficient heat dissipation. Kicker's blue lace spider, solo cone 360 degree back bracing, and a laser etched cone brace combine as a single ultra rigid unit. The result is increased clarity, higher volume, and added reliability. The square cone features over 20% more surface area than round subwoofers. It's attached to a Santa Prene surround, then stitched to the cone for long life and durability. This surround features Kicker's patented ribbed corners, which fully dictates cone motion and extends surround life, 
At the base of the unit, a pair of custom form flanges integrate seamlessly with an extremely low profile mounting system, consisting simply of a mounting plate and bar. Once installed, the overall height of the enclosure is only nine and a half inches. This profile is small enough to work perfectly in countless trucks, sedans, and SUVs. Once again, Kicker sets a new standard with the groundbreaking design and unparalleled performance of the all-new L7 QB8. This is where Kicker started, right here, in this garage right back here. It was a great place, but just a little bit small. And uh, after about six months, actually, we got kicked out of here. My wife said there's entirely too much sawdust uh, seeping into the house from the garage. But um, this was the beginning right here in the garage on 1412 Eastern Street in this little house. Okay, here we are at Kicker location number two down on South Main Street in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And this is the little house that we moved into after we got kicked out of the garage. Here we are, kicker location number three. We spent about seven or eight years in this place. We moved from the little house right over here into the Quanta that when we ran out of space. We had about 35 employees. Here we are, kicker location number four. This is up on top of the hill. It's a little bit windy here. But we spent the years from 1989 until about 2006 here, until we moved into our new facility.
Good evening, everyone. Tuesday night, 7.30 Central Time. You know what time it is. It's Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining the show. Hope you had a fantastic week. You know this past weekend, Slamology, huge event, Indianapolis, Indiana. we got a couple special guests in the studio. We're going to bring them on in a few minutes. We're going to talk about that show a little bit, along with our main topic tonight, which is Extreme SPL Builds. And we have special guest, Tim from Hushmat. He's going to be joining us as well. If you're building a big Extreme SPL build, you're probably going to need some sound in or go along with that. So it's going to be a good time. We're going to try to keep housekeeping really short tonight so we can get right into it because I know we got a lot more content than we're going to have show. Any good comments, man? Sandy, throw them up on the screen. Tonight, we do have Sandy back behind there. Maybe Ernie will give me a shout on the back camera. Jeremy has actually stepped out for the evening. He's on vacation. Everyone give Sandy a wave back there. Hey, you know what? As far as Sandy goes, she said she wants all the likes and friend requests. So if you've got one, drop them her way. (laughs) Sandy is stabbing me in the back with her eyes right now. But, uh, you know, we got Sandy back there. She's actually taking the place of JW tonight. Ernie is back there as always. Bill Frog, he's handling social media. Tim behind camera. I'm your host, Kip Blitzy, here for Kicker MS Live. Thanks for joining us tonight. And as we kind of alluded to, we got a couple special guests in the studio. We got uh, Mr. Steve Barber and Hammy Sterner from uh, Shooting On Them Company. I'm going to mispronounce it a little bit there, so if I can keep it uh, PG 13 for the audience out there, uh, they can probably say it when they come on. But they're a couple of great guys. We do things with them on a social side and company to company marketing. A couple of real great fellas. Great to have them on the show. Uh, XO is going to be joining us tonight. And like I said, Tim from Hushmat. So we're going to get right into that in just a few minutes. We all did have dinner tonight. And of course, when you come to Oklahoma, everywhere is known for something. And people think about Oklahoma, they think about barbecue. We are known for barbecue. The, the thing with Oklahoma when it comes to barbecue, we're not really talking about meat slathered in sauce. We're really talking about smoking meats and using seasonings. And if you want sauce, you put that on after the fact. And so uh, Hammy and Steve were like, hey, you know, we have one request for dinner night since we're having dinner with you in the studio could we have barbecue like sure so we reached out to cherokee strip barbecue that's a local joint here in town if you're from stillwater you got to check it out they make some fantastic smoked meats on a daily basis if you happen to run a trip through and barbecues your game stop for a little visit here and check cherokee strip out because they make some fantastic food so check them out so we did get barbecue tonight everyone seemed to have their fill there were uh, the plates were not empty there was way more food than everyone could eat so uh, that's what we had for dinner tonight hope everyone out there is enjoying their dinner uh, especially our pizza winners you never know when we're going to launch another one of those contests so stay tuned. Uh, those are things we drop impromptu. So kind of like the animation in the beginning of the show kind of said there. Uh, yeah, the YouTube animation videos and the trainings are paying off. We're getting even more professional, aren't we, out there? Actually, that's courtesy of Alita, one of our gals that works in production here. She created that animation for us. But if you do like the content of the show, if you like Cherokee Street Barbecue or just anything we're doing here, Smash that thumbs up button for us, if you will. You can do it on the way out the door. You don't have to do it right now, but we really appreciate it. It gives us feedback on the content of the show, lets us know that you like what's going on. And then the special contest we run impromptu, like we may go live on a Wednesday afternoon and announce another pizza contest for next week, or you never know what we're going to do. You want to catch those, you need to subscribe, and you need to hit that bell notification so that you're going to get notified every time we go live with a video because you never know when that's going to happen. So keep that in mind. Hit the button on the way out the door. We sure appreciate it. Any comments about the show or content you'd like to see, as always, social at kicker.com. Reach out to Bill Frog. We love to have your comments. Now tonight, we do have our contest going on this evening. And, man, our game's been stepped up a little bit. we got to give a total shout-out to... Uh, Shooting on them. That'd be uh, still uh, Steve and Hammy over there. And to our good friend Tim from Hushmat. But our grand prize tonight, as you guys know, you all know the prizes. I used to think you didn't know, but now I do know. Uh, grand prize tonight is going to be a Hushmat bulk pack sound deadening kit, a $200 gift card from Shooting on them. You're going to get a pair of the koozies, as always, and you're going to get that black limited edition Kicker Unmasked Live t shirt. Man, that is a fantastic prize pack. I definitely think you want to enter for that. Second place, EB300 earbuds, the pair of koozies and the gray shirt, and then we're going to throw on a $100 gift card uh, for shooting on them, so you can pick up your favorite base head clothing for there. And then third place is going to be the earbuds, koozies, the shirt, and a $50 gift card from shooting on them. So tonight's prizes are really cool. Some great cash prizes in there for you to spend. That's some great clothing you want to get to show that you support the base head community. Go check that out. Get into the drawing tonight. So that's tonight's drawing. We have our, we've kind of gotten the habit of trying to run a month-long contest, and we've got one currently going on right now with Mobile Soundstage Engineering. That's with Mr. Mark Eldridge over in Bixby, Oklahoma. And that is a drawing to win a free seat at the training. It's a two-day training over a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, We're going to cover your hotel room for five days. We're going to give you $250 cash to help cover your meals or drinks, whatever you may need on your expenditures there. 
You're going to get the training. You're going to get to meet Steve Irby. You're going to come to Stillwater, do a tour of the facility, be on the Tuesday show, and then out you go. It's a fantastic prize. It's a prize package valued well over $1,500, uh, and that runs through July 6th. Uh, July 5th, we'll actually pull the winner and announce them on the July 6th show. So please go hit that contest. And as always, it's kicker.fun. That is how we run all of our contests through kicker.fun. And it's forward slash learn SQ for the Mark Eldridge Mobile Soundstage Engineering Giveaway. It's a fantastic prize, fantastic giveaway. If you want to learn more about sound quality, how to tune a car, how to get the great sound staging, imaging, and everything you can out of a vehicle, you're going to share that time with a group of probably around 14 other guys plus Mark. Wonderful time. Go enter that contest. And please, if you enter, be sure that if you win, you're going to take advantage of it. Because if you're not going to be able to attend it, we'd like to pull another winner to take your place. So only enter if you're serious about coming to that show. Great prize. Big shout out to Mark Eldridge over MSE for joining us with that. Love having him back on the show the 6th to announce that winner. Along with that, remember, if you're from Canada or the U.S., you now qualify for our nightly prizes that we do on Kicker Unmasked Live. So through our distributor friends up in Canada, Gemsen, G-E-M-S-E-M, not Gensen, make sure I pronounce that properly for you guys. Uh, they take care of that everything north of the border, so you guys can enter our nightly drawings. We actually get the prize to you. If you are from Canada and you win, we've actually had two winners from up north. That's great. It takes us a little longer to get your prize to you, just, so just hang tight, but you are going to be capable of that. As we're able to bring other countries on board, we'll let you know, but right now our nightly prizes here at the Unmasked Show are just for U.S. and Canadian residents only. So thank you for that. That little bit of housekeeping's out of the way. Uh, Ernie is nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs because we got to pack up all this gear, do a bunch of testing this week, get it on the truck because next week we head out to a little event. What is that event, Ernie? Maybe you want to put it up on the screen for me. Just this. <laughs> It's just this little event called the Kicker Country Stampede, and that is going to be the 24th, the 25th, and the 26th of this month. Uh, all of us actually pack up everything here in the studio, shut down. We head up to Kansas uh, to go to Topeka. It's at the Heartland Motor Raceway is where the event is located. Uh, we're going to get there Tuesday. We're actually going to set up on site, and Tuesday night, we're still going to do the Kicker Unmasked Live uh, weekly show, but we're going to do it Tuesday night at the XRV. We're hoping to get uh, Mr. Sean Cotta. He is a representative from the radio station up there that is uh, heavily involved in the Kicker Country Stampede. And Mr. Wayne Rouse, and Wayne is the guy that actually started the Country Stampede over 25 years ago. We're hoping to have them on as guests, and you never know what else is going to happen. But that's going to be a live show in the field. We don't know what to expect. It's going to be live. So if you're looking for a good time or something to laugh at, I'd be sure to want to tune in next Tuesday because that's going to be the live show coming to you straight from Topeka, Kansas if everything works. Uh, so with that out of the way, we've got that, we've got that, we've got the stampede, like and subscribe, Canada contest tonight. Hey, we got any people with some good shout out comments here, Sandy, we need to put up on the screen or have you been keeping them busy? I've been looking at the camera, so I don't know what's going on here. Got one that says, hey, Sandy, hello. So Sandy's getting all her hellos. So apparently you're getting all the likes and friend requests at this point. What's going on, Kicker team? Getting ready for another show? Yeah, Kicker Stampede. I thought that was my 84 Honda Accord with the two... <laughs> we got to put that one up there. That one's worth putting up on the comment screen. Uh, you know what, El Fuego? Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. You'll never know. You know, a, a gold-lettered kicker woofer. I mean, that'd be a great 50-year anniversary product, wouldn't it? Hmm. You have to think about that. You never know. <laughs> so with that said, I see some more comments here. Sandy, if you see any... Oh, here, I like that one. Insert great comment here. How do I enter to win the Type R? Don't know. Type R. Slim Bob. Hi, Kip. I'll pay attention to you. Hey, what's up, Slim Bob? Good to see you, man. Kip, bring out Sandy. Hey, Ernie, give us another shot of Sandy. They want to see Sandy again. Come on. Sandy. There she is. Us... <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That's hilarious. Bring out Sandy. So there's another shot of Sandy. So with that said, I do want to get our guests out here so we can roll into the show. We've got a lot of different topics we want to cover. So with that said, first guest I want to bring on, someone's going to be the left of me and someone's going to be the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle with you. It's going to be Mr. Hammy Sterner and Mr. Steve Barber from Onum Company. Or <laughs> Hey, uh, Kip, I think I could help with the whole Onum paradox for PC purposes. Help me. So uh, just to allude to the more concept of what we do, let's do shart in Onum. Ooh. <laughs> a little concept. And then you could get there, but it's not too bad. And it makes more sense because we don't necessarily have any guns per se for our company. So maybe that's so, something for the future. Mr. Barber, welcome to the show, Thanks sir. Thanks for having me. Hammy. Ah, 
How you doing? You. I'm doing well. So, Steve, obviously, and of course, Hammy by default because, you know, Steve talks Hammy into doing stuff that Hammy doesn't want to do. At least that's the impression that I get. <laughs> he wanted to do this one. He yeah, wanted to do this one. Yeah. So, actually, I'm going to take a seat real quick. So, they actually, uh, Steve reached out to me before Slamology, and Steve was like, hey, you know, we're going to be traveling through. I'm going to Slamology. Is there any way possible that I could get, first it was like, can I, can I get some bags? And I like to use kicker bags to give my own people buy my swag. They said, yeah, yeah, no problem. We'll get you some bags and some other things. Then he said, do you think, do you think maybe you, I could take a, a, an L7X or a Solo X? And, and that was like asking me or Steve Irby for one of our firstborn children <laughs> to leave the building. And so we actually talked about it, and uh, Steve promised he signed in blood and everything and said, yeah, I'll take care of it, make sure it comes home, which it did. It's right here on the table. It does have one bug that came with it. Did it get a bug? Are you, right we got an Indiana bug. Oh, no, it's a leaf. It's a leaf. Oh, is it a leaf? Oh, oh okay. I thought it was a bug. Yeah. Oh, well. So they actually <laughs> took this along with... Uh, you had it up here earlier. Oh, they're back here. I'll, I'll grab it. I'll go grab it. We actually sent them along with, and we did a special <coughs> contest just at Slamology. And I'll tell you, I'm not going to say the number, but it's pretty sad how many people didn't see these. I mean, I even had, I mean, Drew Jones from Baseholic Productions. Drew, if you're in the feed, thank you. I know you got a couple of these signs, some stuff in your booth. Um, but it's like like you were saying, you put one sign up, people didn't, like they didn't see it or they didn't understand it, and then you put all three of them up, it's like, oh, it's a contest. <laughs> yeah, at first I basically just told everybody, they, they came and saw the sub and they were staring at it, and I I was like, look up like two inches. You can win a sub if you just enter this contest. And they're like, oh. So they pulled their phone out and do the thing. And it took a while in, until I realized nobody was going to see the one sign, even though it was literally the bottom of the sign was right. Right here. And they so, so they weren't seeing it. So I just put all three signs on top of each other. And then I think almost all 60... Seven entries were the second. Were day. the second day, yeah. so it's like I thought. Think people were kind of like ooh and on. They just couldn't look up two inches to see there was a sign. But we are going to draw a winner. Um, I don't. Bill, did we do that tonight? Yeah. We did. Yeah. Are we going to announce them tonight? Maybe. It's me. Okay. Well, might do it at the end of the show. <laughs> hey, you know what? Whatever Bill Frog feels like, we're going to do a little bit later. But we did do this. You had to be present to win. Uh, I know we had these entry. We had the cutaway and the woofer at the uh, Sharton on them booth. Sharton on them. Sharton yep. on them. Hey, I, I can say, sure. hey, I still got my job. Hey, all right. I'm liking this. Um, but it was at your booth. And then, of course, uh, Drew Jones from Baseaholic Productions, he had this the over in his booth yeah, to enter. Well. Yeah. So, and Drew's another great guy out there. He does box design. So if you're in the market for any of that, he's another good guy to reach out to. I know he's in the feed quite a few times. So, Slamology, good show? Oh, amazing show. Excellent. Yeah. Superb. I think the most we've ever seen there. The most. Everybody was obviously itching to get out. But it was, there was I, I think, that, what did they say, 300 more? Yeah, it was like, uh, so 2019, I think there was 800 or so entries. And then this one, I think this they just surpassed the 1,100. Wow. A lot, that's a lot. 1,100 car audio entries. I think there's another... A uh, thousand plus uh, slam vehicles as well so that were there. So yeah, over two thousand vehicles. So a lot of pent up energy. People want to get out. And people do want stuff. to get out and do something different for sure, and get out and do something in general, especially something bad. Arps. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's, let's break some stuff. I want to <laughs> shake it apart. Shake it, uh, break it, babe. You know, Kicker was a, a sponsor for Slamology. Unfortunately, we're still kind of uh, walking a fine line between these COVID restrictions that are there. Everything's opening up, which is good news, and they're getting better. But we had to actually pull out a sending person to the show, which was kind of good. You weren't there for us, but it was nice that we could send the woofer with you to be on display and have some stuff for you to take there. Mm -hmm. So we were there in spirit, but unfortunately couldn't go because when we go on events, we actually take a break when we get back. So we had too many other events for the pipe, Stampede being one of them. So we had to make the call to not go to Slamology, unfortunately. But uh, things stay on course. We'll be there. We will be there strong next year. And I just want to touch on it real quick while you're here. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Slamology, I've kind of jokingly said that I think you've got a show that could potentially be the Slamology of the West. That's the, that's the uh, goal. Yes, so we have uh, the showdown is what we're calling it now. It was the CES showdown, which happened during the Consumer Electronics Show in Vegas. Right. Uh, but it's been moved to the SEMA weekend, which is the Specialty Equipment Manufacturer Association, which is the world's largest car show, um, as well as the world's largest uh, car convention. Uh, anything that has to do with uh, upgrading your car or anything is there, as well as all the big manufacturers uh, like Ford and GM. They're there doing stuff like uh, Drift. Uh, you know, getting get a car and drift around, getting their rock climb, climbers and sure. really cool stuff. Uh, so we moved the show to that weekend. Uh, one, one main reason was COVID. Uh, we couldn't have our 2021 show because of COVID. 
Uh, but also another reason we were we were wanting to move it to SEMA for a while because the <clears throat> the crowd and the stuff that is, is at SEMA is more aligned with car audio in our sure. industry. So we've got a show that weekend. Uh, and we aligned with a, another big show that's always been that weekend, which is the Great Las Vegas Taco Festival. Uh, Say that. Hold on. Taco. F Taco Say it with me, folks. Yeah. Taco <laughs> Festival. Yep. And I've actually had a chance. I got to intercede on that because we did a. We did a private party with you a couple years back in Vegas yeah, at CES at Bay Showdown. Yes. And you had one of your partner's friend come, and he actually provided the meal that was at the room. Yep. And I got to tell you, it's probably the best, oh, yeah. best uh, street tacos, especially the carnitas I've ever had. That's, uh, we're fortunate being in Vegas so close to Mexico. Uh, we, our, our Mexican food is, is, it rivals Mexico. I mean, it's, we're right there. It's, it's there. So if you love tacos, that's a good enough reason to just come. You're going to come for the tacos. Yeah, 30 but, plus taco <laughs> vendors. Who doesn't there, so. I mean, I'm going to show up just for a, t I mean, we're, we're on plans to be there. I mean, we're, we're actually going to be one of the uh, title sponsors You're for the, the show. You're the title sponsor, yep. So yep. we're picking up title sponsorship for the show. And I say this with, with uh, <laughs> sincere appreciation for the current show, Slamology, obviously, which happens in Indianapolis. And that's a huge show but i really think uh, what i've seen you do the last couple years because we participated in your show with you moving it to the sema time slot and then hooking your wagon up with this not just the taco festival but it's a legit car show as well oh yeah yeah so 360 car shows uh is a really big car promoter in the on the west coast and it's called 360 car shows because it encompasses all genres of cars okay so there's nobody that's left out there's basically every car you can think of um, 2019, there was 22,000 people through the gates, paid attendees, um, with 1,100 registered show cars. This year, I think they've got over 1,500 registered already, and the show is four months away. So. Wow. So It's going to be large. So huge car show that covers everything. Yep. That's well-established, great attendance. A taco Fest. Talk, did I? Did you tacos? <laughs> did you talk about the Taco, taco Fest. Did I, yeah. Did, did we mention there's a Taco Festival yeah, going on, folks? <laughs> and the music festival. Mu oh, and the music festival. I forgot As about well. that. The music festival. Music festival starts uh, basically every night. Friday night, I think it's around seven. Uh, kind of after the the day activities wind down, it turns into a music festival that goes all night. And then uh, there's also a carnival for the kids during the day. So full. It's it's literally a. Come to Vegas for SEMA, spend a few days at downtown at the car show, um, see that stuff, or, or at SEMA, and then spend the weekend with your family at our show and you know, do the thing and have it's, a good time and eat tacos. It's a whole so, shebang. Whole shebang. So obviously looking for information, follow you on social. Is there a website or anything in particular they need to know right now for any further info? We don't have a website uh, for the showdown. Um, the Great Las Vegas Taco Festival might. I'll have to check on that. But for Facebook, uh, there's events, event pages for each one of those events okay. on Facebook. So that's the easiest way to, Perfect. to find info for And if they have questions about your show, they can also reach out to you directly. Just contact you through yep. Sharpen on them. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Can I say it? Hey. Okay. Well, I can't get fired. You, you can say it. I, okay. You can say it. Sure. You, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, the shit on them uh, Facebook page is uh, where you could contact either Ham or I, or you could just message me directly. I'm I'm pretty good at uh, getting back to people. So. Cool. I'm over forty. There's some things you don't trust. <laughs> One of them is a is, is a, a shark. A shark. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't trust them. Hey, I'm not over forty, but I do eat way too much. So. <laughs> you know, you you say you eat way too much stuff, but I think even for your standards, we kind of put it on you today in Oklahoma. You guys, you call oh, it you three did. squares. Yeah, you three squares. And I, I'm <laughs> three not used to having three squares. I'm used to having like a quarter and then 14 portions later at night if I do, but if I don't, I don't. And three squares just hit it full. <laughs> So they're putting on me right over here. No. It was a good time. Stillwater. We, we love, I mean, this is, it's a, you know, Stillwater is a cool, little being the key word. I mean, it's not a huge town here, but it's not so small either. It's, you know, with OSU being here, there's about 35,000 people here that live in Stillwater. When the students are in town, we get a little over 50,000, approach 55,000. So it's that moderate sized town. But, you know, we're proud to show off what we got. And I had to take you that, I'm glad you decided to go to breakfast because at yep. first they weren't even in for breakfast. And then I think I conned them into it. Yep. Well, the, we, the picture's kind of sold you know what conned us, us in was, you know, Chili's being closed at 1030. <laughs> so they were like, well, we can't eat now, so it's, we got to eat in the morning. <laughs> so, we, yeah, we were in. It was good, too, that, that uh, oh, it was Just superb. Wafflin. Was yeah, that Wafflin? If you're in Stillwater, go to Just Wafflin for breakfast. Get the chicken and waffles. There are not many places that I've been that, I mean, when you ask for your eggs, you know, over easy or over medium or over hard, I mean, there's a certain done way. Right. And the eggs, every time I go to that place, are spot on. Yeah. So The waffle itself was awesome because normally when you get peanut butter, it's just a little portion. you got to oh, yeah. figure it out. The presentation was, you know, unparalleled. They drizzled it all perfectly proper over the chocolate chip pancake. 
presentation was on point. Uh, eggs were perfect. I mean, great spot. <laughs> <laughs> He's happy he got his three squares today. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll take that first square for sure. All right, well, so Slamology, we're going to get into more on that in just a second. Obviously, I wanted to touch on your show that's coming up this fall because I think that's going to be a huge show. November 6th and 7th, also the dates. November 6th and uh, 7th. SEMA is happening that week, basically. Uh, let's see, 6th, 7th, so it would be the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. 6th. No, 3rd, 4th, and 5th is SEMA. And then 6th uh, and 7th is the weekend would be the showdown. There you go. Awesome. Talk festival. So we'll actually be, uh, as we get close to that, more information will be posted on our social media, Kicker social media as well. As Shart and Onum social media, check them out. Hit their Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can say what I can say. It's, it's a good laugh. I hope you guys are getting fun out of it. So with that said, we have another special guest I want to join us tonight because our topic kind of is centered around uh, extreme SPL builds. And obviously with uh, Slamology just coming out of the gate and you're having a new shot coming up, I want to roll those together. But we have EXO. And some people just can't believe we got him on the show, but we do have EXO. So let's bring EXO onto the fee. Hey! How are you the doing this evening, sir? Legend. Good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. Now, I didn't ask these guys, so I really don't know, but I'm going to assume I haven't watched a lot, down a lot of the footage from Slamology, but you had to have been in Slamology, correct? Actually, I'm in the process of trying to buy a new house and moving at the same time, so I wasn't able to make it to I completely feel your pain. I'm in the process of building a house myself right now, and I don't know if, when you're trying to take over the job and do it yourself, there's more work than you can realize. So I can appreciate the position you're in. Oh, yeah. I couldn't imagine being in charge of it. <laughs> uh, me either. I'm trying. <laughs> Sometimes I don't think I am. <laughs> That's how it goes. <laughs> so, big thing for you. I've been watching your channel. You're in the middle of a huge build going into a, is that a Nissan? Yeah. It's a Nissan. You don't see them very often, do you? It's they're the NV Nissan van. It's a full con 3500. So, how far out do you think you are on that project? When do you think it's going to be wrapped up and actually functional and drivable and working? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Twice if you as long as you thought. Question six months ago, I would have said already. Right. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> It, it's, it's just the, the, the second you think you have everything dialed in, you don't. And and it, it's just a financial, it's an undertaking that a lot of people don't really understand. It's a huge financial undertaking. Yeah, you know, looking at how you're building that thing, obviously, uh, not that I'm trying to compare the two, but you're going down that same path of construction techniques that Steve's done in his uh, Move Air 2, your Explorer build. I mean, you're doing the same thing. I mean, this is an extreme build. I mean, you're using lots of steel, lots of small uh, plywood filled in between that steel. Uh, Do you have a specific goal in mind that you'd like to achieve as far as performance out of the system? Uh, Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's extreme in the sense that it's crazy and it's insane. But it's not going to be an extreme SPL build. Like technically, there's a there's a whole group of people that when you say that, they think of like an extreme SPL build is you know doing seventies and above. This isn't going to be something like that. This is more for. I don't really enjoy to get pounded to death. I don't like my ribs to dislocate. I don't. <laughs> I, I like the low notes, and I've always been true to that ever since I started this. So I'm I'm going to be gearing toward a different realm so it will be an extreme build in the sense that it's crazy but it's not going to be an extreme spl their build there won't be bolts in the doors there won't be uh yeah it's you not know, a numbers chaser built up to the floors. there won't be steel in the doors it'll still function like a regular daily driver okay so obviously, I want to bring, I want to get our, our third guest on camera here, so we can all chit chat around, and have a good time on that. So doing an extreme build like you're doing, XO, or an extreme build like you're doing, Steve. Obviously, you guys are are doing a lot of over the top work to get a strong, rigid structure to kind of contain all that sound. And I'm going to assume at some point you guys look at certain areas or parts and you go, okay, I, I need to use some kind of a sound dampening material. Is that correct? Um, in my case, <laughs> I've gone so overboard that uh, Deadner won't do anything for me. But yeah, basically every build ever before this, uh, it's necessary. And, and really, unless you're going to spend three thousand dollars on pour foam like I did to basically fill every single void there is, uh, Deadner could do that for you. Um, 
I think and a fraction Tim, of the cost. <laughs> I think for an average consumer's car, Tim from Hushmap probably has some products that for a lot less than three thousand dollars that could help them get rid of all that rattling, buzzing, vibrating, and things that are going yeah. on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so let's get him to join the feed here. I want to join him as well because he obviously came on board. He's got some product he's donated to tonight for the grand prize giveaway. So this is Tim from Hushmap. Tim, how you doing, man? Yep, I'm doing great. It's good to be with you guys. Thank you for joining us tonight. You know, we have this little production called Kicker Unmasked Live Weekly, we do, and, uh, you know, people seem to like it, and so we were very thankful we reached out to you. Uh, I mean, a lot of people may or may not know that uh, we actually have partnered up with Hushmat, and Hushmat has become the exclusive product that we use here at Stillwater Designs in any of the demo or show vehicles that we do at the company, and we sincerely appreciate you working with us on that. I, I can't say that enough. Thank you. It's, you know, it, it's really a pleasure to work with you guys, Kip. Uh, great people, great organization. We're, we're thrilled to be partnering with you. So give us kind of a, you know, run to, obviously these guys are building on extreme builds. We're going to do some more questions with them, but let's talk about an average consumer's car. Someone who's throwing in a pair of 10s, a pair of 12s, maybe a couple 15s. They got the stock car, stock deadener. I think we all know what they sound like going down the road. It sounds like a couple gorillas in the trunk trying to get out. So what, what would Hushmat come to the table with and go, okay, if you're going to treat your car and sound deaden it for a nice audio system so that you can experience more of the audio in your car, experience the audio at a louder volume, and not listen to your car rattling, what do we do? You know what? It's a great question. And if you look at the area of the interior of the car, you look at the trunk, you look at the trunk lid, the rear quarters, the floor pan, the firewall, the doors, you basically have a, a metal can that has to be deadened. And you can do that several different ways. You can weld steel bars in there and deaden the door. But this is a, a product that anybody can install. It's a product that it's peel and stick. It's what, if, you can, if you can put on a Band-Aid, you can put on sound dead. And it's really simple. Our pride is we have the easiest to install material on the planet. And we've made it for 30 years. It's been on cars on the road for over 30 years. And we, uh, we've done studies of, of vehicles and junkyards. Our product is still bonded onto the, to the panels in junkyards. They've been sitting in there rusting out. No rust behind our product. So the average person, really, think about it. You know, who's an installer out there that has ever built a subwoofer enclosure out of sheet metal? Nobody, right? Uh, nobody. Well, well, except for Steve, <laughs> he's using plates. Well, plates, Steve. <laughs> a little different. He's using yeah. steel plate. A little different. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, a little different. <laughs> but you put a kicker woofer box in a trunk with no sound deadening. What have you done? You've created yeah. a metal enclosure in the trunk. Exactly. So absolutely. I start there. I start there with the deadening. Hammy uh, manages a car audio shop, so he, yeah, he so, oh, yeah, you were saying on that. the day-to-day -day application, you know, this is way more applicable than the extreme builds. You know, it's, Steve's working on the, with the Move Air too. So, no, we definitely uh, it makes a phenomenal difference. Even even just a little bit in a small area will will block the noise resonance quite quite a bit. So when you do like the whole trunk lid or, or uh, the um, the rear deck lid on a lot of vehicles, are the, the two most crucial areas. Uh, more often than not, it makes a huge difference. Uh, definitely, it's nice to have good product and good adhesion is a key thing. So, you know, speaking of good adhesion, not to cut you off there, Tim, but maybe you can elaborate on the story. But I know John Myers, uh, and I know you know John. I mean, who who in the industry doesn't know John? Everyone I guess that would be the John. real question. Everyone knows John, <laughs> but John was, you know, when he found out we're talking about, you know, having Hushmat on and we were using Hushmat in our products, he was he went down this path, and maybe you can explain a little bit more. But he's like, yeah, yeah, I said, you know, John, he, he's our version of Ham the squirrel. I mean, he just wind him up and let him go. Um, but he was like, yeah, 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 I saw this demo and like the panel's all wet or something on it and he just slapped it on there and it just stuck. He's, I've never seen stuff like that before. So so maybe you can elaborate on that and explain what he's talking about. Yeah, I mean, we, we actually use oh, surface oils as an adhesion promoter. So we don't, we oh. don't clean the metal. We don't clean with, if there's oil on it, our product will actually stick better. So, so if there's oil on it, it'll stick better. Yes. It uses that surface oil as an adhesion promoter. And you've got about two minutes. You can reposition the product, take it off, put it back on if you don't like right where you put it. After about two minutes, it's there for the life of the car. 
Wow, so that's crazy. So he, John wasn't exaggerating. Literally, it can be coated with an oily substance, and you stick right over it, and it just it actually accelerates or helps the bond. Yeah, we've we've done demos, Kip, with uh, WD-40 and silicone spray. We'll spray oh, a wow. panel with silicone spray. Our product sticks to it. It blows people's well, minds. Well, WD nothing sticks to WD-40, <laughs> including Teflon. <laughs> Much that does. <laughs> That's crazy. So obviously, and, and sound deadening the vehicle, and obviously hand with you running a shop, um, you, you, you think trunk's the first place to start? Doors, floor? Yeah, for the what audio you system, you, you want to get as close to that woofer box as you can. That trunk is really the first area. And then when you start talking about quality of sound in the interior of the car, then we start looking at the floor pan. You get tremendous road noise that distorts audio sound that comes up from the bottom up. So we, we do the floor pans and we have two really two different basic materials. We have the deadening material, which is the foil back product, self adhesive. And then we have a silencer foam that actually goes on top of the aluminum foil on the floor pan. And that takes away any of that reverberated noise or sound waves that are bouncing around the inside of that car. And it just softens that edge a little bit. So okay. it, it's a really effective uh, uh, product for using in addition to the traditional sound ending material. So I know you got a demo behind you that kind of really shows you the extremes of here's a panel that is treated and here's a panel that's not treated. Walk us through that. What, do you, what does the yeah. deadener itself really do? What, what it really does, if you think about the inside of a car is like a balloon. That metal is expanding and contracting. Every time that base hits and moves air, you're, you're causing everything in the interior of that car to expand and contract. So that's absorbing all of that energy. That really is demonstrated like a symbol. So we'll hit that symbol and you hear that energy, it just gets absorbed. Oh yeah, there's... <laughs> and it really, the sound dating material restricts that vibration it allows that sound pressure and that sound wave to go through the air rather than getting absorbed in the structure of the car and that's plastic that's that's sheet metal that's basically everything in the interior of that vehicle got it so definitely an average consumer who's not really doing an ex extreme SPL build like EXO or Steve are currently involved with, but they've got an, an average car, they want to get great sound in the car, they want to control things. Hushmat has a wide range of products that they should come look at. So I'm going to ask you the next question is, where do they come look at it? What's your website? You can come to hushmat.com. Really simple. That's easy. Yeah. That's real it's simple. <laughs> right here, um, hushmat.com. Not only do we have the universal kits for the builds that people are going to do repetitive builds and use, you know, significant amounts of material like in a Nissan uh, van. Um, but also it, we have about 366,000 vehicle specific kits. So wow. if somebody's got a Honda Accord or somebody's got a, you know, a, a, a Ford Fiesta, an F-150, <laughs> uh, Mustang, we've got kits that are packaged specifically for those vehicles. Got it. So unlike unlike a guy that's here in the back, your your website's easy to find. It's just hushmat.com. It's not Atlanta Tuttle Installation Services or something long like that that you have to type for seven years. Real simple. Real simple. That's we awesome. want people to find us. Okay, Tim, thank you much. And hey, thank you for contributing this product to the show. If you don't mind, you can hang in the show. I don't want you to go anywhere, but I'm going to get back to asking some questions of these two guys on Extreme Builds. And if you got something to add to that, feel free to chime in. Chip, I'm going to hang in here and uh, I'm going to enjoy the show and I'll jump in when. Uh... Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. You know, here's, you know, my truck. Sa <laughs> here's my truck sounds like the first symbol I need to deaden so badly. Well, I'll tell you what, Jesse Strawn, check out Hushmat. They have some great products. Uh, we've started using the stuff here. Uh, the adhesion properties of it are second to none. When John was telling me about how it actually would adhere and bond over an oily surface, because I've used deadening, other deadening materials, and you got to get that surface clean. I mean, you got to yep. spend some prep time, and it's got to be clean or it will not stick. And when John was so excited about it, he said, oh, yeah, this stuff, you can, he said, and that's now that you said that, Tim, that's what he said. Yeah, you can spray 
WD-40 on there and slap it on and it'll stick. I'm like, you're crazy. I'm like, this is John. I mean, so I need to find out if this is really, because Hammy, you know, know where Hammy's gone with this. So it's really good. Yes. One thing I just want to add real quickly, and a lot of people don't realize it, but we, we are the company that developed constrained layer damping for the automotive industry in 1989. So oh, it's, wow. it's one of the pieces of history that we've been making this material for 32 years. So so more than a minute. More more than a minute, and uh, uh, I'll uh, I'll check out. But that is one really key fact that we we've had vehicles all over the world with this material in it. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm sure we'll have other comments that come up to him. So please, so thank you for hanging on in the feed. Uh, I'm glancing up the clock. Just give everyone a heads up. As you know, our habit of doing the nightly drawing, we do it. We start it right at 7:15. We run it till 8:30. We stop it, and then we do the drawings. And it's for people who are at the show. So I'm looking up the clock. You got about 20 minutes ish, maybe 21, to uh, get in on that drawing. So if you haven't entered tonight's contest, or if you're just popping into the feed and don't know what's going on, check the link scrolling across the bottom of the screen. It's going to be kicker.com uh, forward slash. SPL build and that's the link for tonight's contest so you got about 20 minutes go enter that contest do not miss out on a chance to win this fantastic prize tonight which includes great stuff from Tim at Hushmat and our guys from Sharton on them I, I think I'm gonna have to say it that way from now on I got, I see, I got you bud. <laughs> you got me you got me covered and... Hammy's got my back yep, yep, I got you. hey Brian asked a, a, a question we got up here there. yeah Mr. Mr. Chamberlain right, let's, let's bring that up is there any talk on Kicker coming to the Sundown Show this year? Well, Brian, that's a good question. You and your partner in crime have a politely asked us to come to that show, and it just it's not that we don't want to in the past. It just hasn't really worked out into our event schedule. Why don't you get with me offline or reach out to Bill on social, and let's talk about that, because we would gladly come hang out with you guys. Uh, uh, I've, I've had the great opportunity to actually break bread and open bottles of whiskey that taste and smell like burnt voice coil. Oh, I've had it. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. real. With Brian and Jacob and a couple of great guys from Sundown Audio. Can't say enough good things about them. They're really cool guys. So, Brian, reach out to us and let's start that conversation talk about that. Yeah, if it works into our schedule, I'd love to do that. And besides, it's a great excuse for me to come and uh, we can fight over who gets to pick up the dinner ticket again, but it's on me this time. So, <laughs> you don't get it. It's mine. <laughs> Here's another question I'm going to take real quick. When will the Solo Kitchen be ready? I'm going to assume that's a typo for Solo X. No, it oh, could be the Solo cool. Kitchen. I mean, I don't know when it's going to be ready, but the Solo we Kitchen can start it working will be on a while. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll be a couple couple Convert years. All the we'll get it going here. We got the Solo Couch. We got the kitchen set. We got the Solo Knife. Yeah, Everything he might want. be going that way. Yep. I didn't think about that. Could be, you know, you never know. <laughs> you know, I, real quick, guys, keep this short, but we actually have a, a, a seat set out of a Bennington pontoon, pontoon boat here mm -hmm. that Bennington sent us because our engineers were working on speaker sets for a Bennington pontoon boat. And Hammy goes over there and he lays on it and of course he's being hammy and all over it. and he's like man this is like that couch is this the couch and like no this isn't the couch and i'm sure you said it's the april fool's joke where we do the solo x couch yeah, we need we need so, a solo couch we sure. need so solo kitchen solo kitchen uh coming to a ces near you stay tuned you never know <laughs> automated so audio dad is asking and this would be a good question so exo he wants to know why you're sitting in your car <laughs> well, he's trying to get his head unit to work <laughs> oh, Wi-Fi? Seriously? Wait, you, you, I just dropped getting my off key. the neighbors? I just dropped my key in my heater. It, like, fell into my heater tight. Like, my key's gone. So I'm going to have to right carry now. the I, I was playing around, and now my key fell through this hole. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. I, I jokingly tell people this show is live, and I draw the short straw. So I'm the guy that gets to come out here and look like an idiot. On t mistakes or anything, I'm the guy that gets to be the fall guy. You have now taken the honorary award from me on tonight's show <laughs> because I cannot claim to have dropped my car, my house key into my car vent while I'm on a live TV show on Facebook. No, and it's YouTube. my car <laughs> key. Thank you. It's my car key. Oh, it, oh, it is your car key. You yeah. have to call AAA, bud. <laughs> hey, have you got one of those uh, those why is it out of the tools? Why, why is not? Yeah, why is it what, not, why is it not on a key? Or what, what's going on there off camera that we can't see? The reason why it's off the keychain is because a little blue uh, shit the bed. Ah, okay, makes sense. 
<laughs> All right, so that's that's a good answer. Thanks, I, Audio I've Dad. Locked, I've locked my keys in the lanes when it's when <laughs> I just like I got the mic in there, closed the door. Now I can't get in to push play, and I'm in the I'm in the lane ready to run with my car. Plug. I got it. I got it. I'm, you know, I've I've, 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 I've I've met EXO, and he's got a great sense of humor, which helps. So, you know, we got Alicio here, P. EXO had one job. <laughs> Don't lose your key. <laughs> Just base it out of there, EXO. That's hilarious. Yeah. All right, so I, w- I actually want to ask a question, and, and, and we'll start off with you, EXO, first. Um, it, when you're doing, like you said, your build that you're doing is extreme because of, of the size and the weight. And, and I've seen some of your videos, like the detail that you're going to to actually know how much weight you're taking out of the vehicle to make sure the weight you're putting back in will ride on the chassis or the frame you got. I've watched enough to know that you're really tuned into this. If you had to pick one thing to start with, if someone's going to do an extreme build and you could pick the first thing or the most important thing to, to start with, what is it to you? Is it the vehicle you choose? Is it the deadening? Is it the building of the cage? Is it the structure? What do you think is the, the, the path or the starting point for an extreme SPL or extreme build of this nature that you're doing? Uh, can it be a relatively offbeat kind of answer? Sure. Yeah, well, I guess it would be to to realize that you're about to devote it's like a it's almost you have to change the, your way of living for a little while it, depending if, if you have bankroll maybe you could just do this in a in a year's time you know spending all the money but for a person like me who's had to slowly work his way up uh, i would say the most important part to to do something like this on this caliber is to realize there's going to be some sacrifice sacrifice in both that, both with you... design and with <clears throat> finances and with time and with, like, you know, there's sacrifices everywhere, you know, with size and, and everything. There's sacrifices everywhere. So be, be prepared to make sacrifices. That has got to be probably, I didn't expect you to go that path, but that's probably the best piece of advice for anyone who's dedicating their time and effort into whatever they enjoy, appreciate in their life. And what you've just said there can apply to just about anything that someone's, you know, enjoying as a hobby or taking it to an extreme level. Man, that's that's deep. I'm Steve. Uh, same question. Yes. I mean, I, you can't I don't know if you can top that answer because that's a great answer, but I'm not trying to go that route. But I mean, obviously, those are things you think of, too. But what do you? Well, my path is a little different. The Explorer started as. Uh, my toy it's not my daily um, and, and it's, it's just evolved like there's been so many versions so to start with something from scratch and to build something like we're building uh, like you were saying the bankroll would be pretty crazy right uh, but mine is I've bought and sold equipment uh, through every version and kind of been able to upgrade and, and be able to do things almost on the same cost as the first original build sure um, I, I've been fortunate enough to, to make friends with people in the industry that have given me uh, good deals on a lot of equipment, uh, which has helped me parlay that into better equipment and so on and so forth. Um, so if you're going to get into building an extreme demo vehicle, I think the most important part is buying a vehicle that's going to have the space that you're looking for. And then on top, the second most important thing would be rigidity. Like th- th- what we're doing is creating pressure. Correct. Okay? And if you want pressure to exit into the cabin, the, you make it so that the enclosure section is so rigid that the pressure has nowhere else to go. But the cabin. But the cabin. And then if you make the cabin so rigid that it has nowhere else to go besides out the doors, um, and then you seal the thing up, uh, that's where you get these crazy SPL numbers. So the name of the game is rigidity and strength. Uh, the stronger and more rigid your build is, uh, the, the easier it is to direct the pressure where you want. And that's really, I'm, I'm sure EXO would agree with you guys, and all this work that you're putting into the, the rear enclosure area of every one of these vehicles, no matter what it is, with all of the steel, uh, with all the plywood, with everything you're doing, what you're trying to do is to create a, a shell that will focus and keep all that energy and direct it one direction, and that's toward the windshield. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, any energy that you lose back there is it's lost. Sure. Uh, so like I said, you're trying to convert all that energy. You're spending all this time and money, and you're producing all this power. Um, so you might as well go the whole nine and, right. and get it to do what you want it to. Because you can. I mean, you can control what these cars are doing. Uh, it's just they're, these things that, that we build now with all this power, they're very strong. So you got to contain them uh, in these extreme demo vehicles. Yeah, we, we were doing some... Uh, 
Go ahead and answer what you're going to say, XO. I want you to go to there first. Oh, I was, I was just going to add to it where it, it, it's almost a double-edged sword. The more that you add to the strength of your enclosure, you end up chasing demons. So you'll end up transferring mm -hmm. all that flex into another area. You fix that area. All that is transferred into your dash. You fix that. And you end up chasing these little areas. And until you finally dial it in on what you need, but it's not an overnight thing. Especially if you plan on going through the whole build, it's really a, a, a process of finding out what needs to be done as it as you go. So, so in another way to put it, what you guys are both saying is, in the end result, you start with what makes sense, and what you end up doing is you fix a link, and then you end up chasing the next weakest link. Pretty well. Well, yeah, some parts yeah. won't. I won't use Deadner at all. Like other areas, like it. Or, or you know, I might not. I, I might not use some here. I might add some here. I might take it off. It, it depends on how it reacts. I, I test a lot and then see how it reacts. <laughs> so I got to This is I. I have no. It's not the rig. It, it deviant. It's always rigged. Remember, we don't pull you. <laughs> and then. Okay. Okay. And then uh, craft chest. I'm chasing my windshield right now. So apparently craft chest must have an SPL vehicle and he's got lots of problems with breaking glass. So it sounds like yeah, craft pretty, chest, pretty man, he was, he was a serious troller show for last man. He was the winner. He came in, won the prize and, stro and strolled out. I don't think I've seen a guy win a prize and troll as good as he did during the show. <laughs> so I got to give it up to craft chest. You win the troll. I won the prize award. Get out of here. I've ever seen. But w with that said, uh, I just got a heads up from my, uh, uh, Timmy, my camera guy back here. He's telling me things. I, I sounded in the entire cat except the trunk lid or i'm sure he meant car but he typed cat yeah, if don't you sound dead in your cat if you <laughs> successfully sound dead in your cat man have i got a job for you <laughs> but let's let's throw it back to tim tim you got something you want to interject on that man come on board yeah i'll, t <laughs> I'll tell you uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend sound deadening the cat I'll, I'll tell you that no <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll tell you, if you do, if you do your trunk and don't do the lid, that's a perfect example of what EXO was saying. That yeah, you'll yep. deaden the quarter panels, you'll deaden that, that trunk floor, but then you're going to be chasing that lid issue, right? I mean, that lid is going to vibrate. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You put a, you don't sound deaden that. You, you really do want to sound deaden the entire area, and when you're especially in the trunk, especially in the trunk. And uh, I got I to give one shout out to a, a great ambassador of Kicker and uh, and Hushmat, and that's uh, Roger Lockridge. Uh, he's uh, he's down in Destin, Florida, and he uses our symbol display on the retail floor, unlike anybody else on the planet. The guy kills it, <laughs> and uh, he was on our show two weeks ago with Chris. Roger was. Yes, he was actually on the show. <laughs> yeah, that's well, hilarious. He uses this display like there's nobody else around, and he bangs on that thing and, and sells the hell out of Picker and Hushmet uh, down in Destin, Florida. So hats off to uh, to Roger. Thanks for that shout out, and hopefully Roger's watching. But yeah, actually, Roger Lockridge, and then uh, he is a um, uh, master, and then uh, MEC certified is Chris Vieira, who works with him. He calls him his sensei. Uh, they both joined us from the show, uh, Best Buy, Destin, Florida, because they'd come across some installs where the wiring was just so bad, and it kind of tied into a show we did a couple weeks before that was talking about wire technology and do things. And he said, man, I got these pictures I got to show you. And I was like, these are great. Would you like to be on the show? And Chris was like, yeah, I'd love to be on the show. Can I be on the show? Yeah, man, that's what it's about. Come on the show. Right and then on. so we got him lined up. And then he said, well, would it be okay if Roger joined? And I said, well, the first question was, well, who's Roger? You know, because if it's Roger Rabbit, I don't know if we want that. But he told me who it was. And so it's Roger Lockridge. So that's kind of cool that you bring that same guy up. Great guys. I loved having him on the show. Very, very intelligent, know what they're doing. And obviously he's focused on doing things the right way. Right on. That's awesome. So XO. Um, want to bring this up. This guy here asks, it's Scott from Powerhog. Well, Chase, Scott, good to see you out here tonight. Uh, your foam video literally made my method for foaming the demo truck, the PH. I don't know what that one is, but PH demo truck. 
like made me a lot more comfortable from your videos. So when you're putting together all these videos, XO, obviously it, there's entertainment value to it. Obviously as, as a YouTube content creator, you need people to come watch your content. But does it really make you feel good to know that what you're doing and showing does educate and help other people do things and do it properly or easier? Certainly, it's really humbling, and it's uh, at, at sometimes I kind of forget that because uh, I'm not trying. At, oftentimes, I'm just learning myself. So if, if people find value in living vicariously through a mistake that I'll make instead, hell, I'll show it. I'm not ashamed. <laughs> That's that's cool. And hey, uh, Scott, hey, no problem, man. I know you're with Power Hog Audio. I just it didn't click with you that PH was Power Hog. I was trying to think of a, a model wow, to make a really? card with that's PH. Cool. That that I, <laughs> I could... that that's really that's awesome. I did, I'm humbled to hear that. Thank you. <laughs> Honestly, XO, one of the videos you posted uh, helped me a lot in uh, oh, sealing sure. off sealing off the, the car, basically, the one, the one you did with uh, just using the fiberglass and resonating all the sides. Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah. did more than one I video that way. I'm trying to make way, it as simple yeah. as possible. I, thank you for saying that. I, I, I really appreciate you guys watching. <laughs> Hey, uh, special shout out to Corey Britt. We can't post your comment, but it's hilarious. And thank you. So anyone who's in the feed, if you haven't seen Corey's comment, he has a great way to tell you what pH means, but I got to let that one go. Oh, man, that's funny. <laughs> so um, from your, and just I'm going to look up real quick. We got about, looks like maybe about eight, nine minutes. I know my clock on the wall is just a shade fast. So for everyone who has not signed up, or if you're just coming into the feed, remember tonight's giveaway for the contest, that drawing uh, entry ends here in about eight minutes. So be sure you go hit that. Hey, Timmy's telling me he got nine minutes, so I was close. So we're a little off. We got about two minutes difference between the clock and real time. That's uh, kicker.fun uh, forward slash, uh, what's the link tonight? Is it kicker.fun? Yes, SPL, kicker.fun. SPL, SPL, SPL build. SPL yeah, build. SPL build. Bill will roll across the bottom of the camera and make me look like an idiot, which is fine. So let me ask you, Steve. So obviously we brought up, I know you're, you've built an extreme shell. I know uh, Exo's built an extreme shell because I followed the build in his Nissan. Other than the shell, they're trying to get something rock solid. What's the next thing in, in the construction of an extreme build that you have to address or look at in your opinion? What's the next most important thing? Mm, I mean, I, I, at that point, well, for us, we built the shell, right? And, and it basically allows us to do whatever we want, baffle loading wall wise. Right. Um, but. As far as the second most important, I don't know if there really is a, like a, an actual list of important things. Okay. Um, power <laughs> in, in cone area. So, and obviously with power, you're talking not, I mean, you got amplifier power, so it takes a lot of watts to drive the cones, but then you're also talking, you got to provide power to those amplifiers. So that's battery, charging. I'm also in that same boat that EXO's in. Uh, uh, my build is for demoing. It's not chasing numbers. It is going to do over at 170, but it's not, I'm not, it's not meant to go in the lanes, seal it up, burp of frequency and get out. It's, it's meant to basically play all day, it's a demo. windows down and uh, do hair tricks and all that, all that fun stuff. So yeah, you need a, a ton of uh, capacity. You need current, you need alternators. Uh, probably the most important part of a build that almost every newish person in our uh, community doesn't quite grasp the fact that, you know, I've got a 10,000 watt amp, I've got this and that, but well, what do you have for extra batteries and what do you have for this and that? I just got my stock battery in a, I got an Optima yellow top in the trunk and one run of four, you know, but I got this 5,000 watt amp and, you know, one of your other shows, uh, you know, previously showed that, you know, that's not possible. Right. You need power to make power. Uh, so, so that, that's probably though, though that would probably be the next important thing to make sure that you're able to provide, uh, the equipment, what it needs to do the whole thing. Because there's no point in doing this shell. extreme build structural shell right. if you're not going to be able to feed it. Exactly. I one, guess that's one the, thing I've noticed, kind of uh, um, on the same subject there, but just uh, making sure your vehicle is like physically, mechanically up to par for adding all this extra weight. You know, on all the elements, oh, you know, yeah. brake. Yep. Uh, you got to understand you're adding so much more weight. Do you have good brakes in there? You don't want to have any issues. Not to mention, like, is it okay? But yeah, you don't want to have a brake issue. But things of that nature, like, Suspension. you got to be conscientious that you're now evolving this thing into not what it was. So right. just kind of anticipate that you probably need to look at those things. That would be one thing I've noticed throughout that 
doesn't get you know looked that said is always an issue after the fact it'd be way better to be proactive about things you're going the same place my head's going so uh exo let me ask you a question uh, i know steez is not a daily driver it's a trailer queen is the one you're building is it a trailer queen or are you going to daily drive it this is going to be able to climb mount washington oh wow so is that why you've been so focused from the start about how much weight you're actually putting into the vehicle because you're trying to keep it to stay on its own suspension and drivetrain? Exactly. The, the, uh, I'm just going in within the specs of like the, you know the transmission, the, the axle, all of that. You know, it, once you get close to ten thousand pounds, you're going to have problems no matter what. But uh, luckily, the G the, the gross weight rating is just about ten thousand pounds with this. So. A lot of people in the community are putting two, three thousand pounds over and still driving. So I think being at a well rated spec, I think I'll be in good shape to drive anywhere, anytime, no matter what. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, I, I drove mine uh, for a while across the country, and uh, the trip to New Mexico was the last one 14 hours each way like this in an SPL vehicle <laughs> where every single bump you're like please don't let that be the bump that puts me <laughs> on the side of the road I, don't want I was like that's it dude this thing a trailer truck and then I've never looked back it's it's just so much more comfortable but and then sometimes I think to myself like I should have just bought something big that could just drive itself and not have to have a trailer and a truck and all that crap but. sure uh, I've been watching the feed here, and guy, yeah, the uh, echoey noise that everyone's been hearing, I've been hearing it too. And so what I've been doing, because we're the master studio here, I've actually reached out and I muted uh, Exo's microphone. We're getting a little bit of feedback or echo from, from Exo. So Exo, if you've got something you want to say, be sure you reach down and unmute your microphone or I'll do it for you. I don't want you to think we've taken you off. It's just that we're getting a lot of feedback or something from your end. So that's what that noise was. Almost sounded like a little bit of underwater. For a minute, I thought I was scuba diving. But yeah, I knew that wasn't possible because <laughs> I couldn't do that. Uh, John Kerry. It's lithium batteries. Yeah, that's. Uh, Let's bring this one up true. here. This might be interesting. So, John Kerry, low powered SPL builds can be impressive as well. You don't see that much nowadays as everyone wants huge power amps and monster subs. All are fun, but it was just cool to see a small power amp run multiple subs or even the whole system. You know, John, you're, you're, you're speaking my language from back in the day, you know, things like that. The, uh, you know, one of the things that's, and I'll point this out. Back in the day, I'm, I'm older than most people in this feed, but you know, I started in car audio in, in my teens, my 16, 15, 16 in car audio. And uh, I had a build at one point, it was in a Honda, it was a 87 Honda Accord hatchback. And I had a big power in that thing for the day, big subs, big ported box, mid bass drivers, mid range, and they used mostly pro sound gear because that was what was available to get really loud back then. A lot of the stuff that's coming out today kind of mimics that in a little bit. But I had a car that back in the day, it would do a solid 145, 146, which, and that was full bandwidth. It was a loud vehicle. I mean, my brothers told me all the time, said, we know you're coming five minutes away. Mm -hmm. I mean, this thing is just, and then being in a hatchback, <coughs> hatchbacks are great because right. they just are a natural horn. Right. They just, and out it goes. And so, but what, you know, what's really changed today is that, you know, you could get loud numbers back then. And I know pressure meters today versus microphone SPL meters that there's, you know, six to nine dB variance in temperature or in readings that people want to talk about. But it does, you can make a great sounding audio system if you're playing music that plays high SPL and you don't need huge power. Where a lot of this big power comes in and this focusing and building the shell and doing the things that these guys are talking about is if you want to start doing that and you want to concentrate that energy in that 20 to 40 or 20 to 50 hertz area and you want lots of it down there, it takes lots of box, it takes lots of throw on the driver, and it takes lots of power to make it do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of a throwback to the old days. Yeah, you know, I remember when, you know, if you put 412s in a car with a 200 watt amplifier, that was, that was big, big, big time. And of course, technology's changed, things have moved on. If you want a big woofer and you want it to move a long way, it's heavier, it's got a bigger coil, so it takes more power to make it move. So you almost end up making things a little less, effi less efficient, but then you're like, ah, it's okay because I can buy more power. Um, so it's really kind of goal oriented. I mean, what's your goal on that? And so with that said, what I kind of like that, so I'm gonna unmute you here, uh, XO, so you can be on the conversation, I'm gonna let you start. So the vehicle you're building, what is your, what's your goals as far as tuning and bandwidth? I mean, what frequency range are you looking to want to focus on in your build? Um, I'm a base. big fan of, uh, yeah, people know I love the lows. So if I could, if I could target my bandwidth in between, you know, 20 to 55 hertz or 20 to 
50 hertz. I don't play much beyond that, and I don't play much below that. I know a lot of people do teens. I'm not much into the teens, but uh, it, 20 to 50. I, I, once you get above 40 hertz, I don't really like to be above a 65 anymore. Like, anything above a 40, 40 hertz, it, I, I don't want to sit in 165 decibels at that. So I'm going to... I'm willing to, like I mentioned before, sacrifice that upper SPL for some gain in lower uh, output. So I, I'm not going to be probably as as loud as as uh, 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 the shitting on him guy. Uh, but I'm not looking to, to terrorize above 40 hertz whatsoever. What about you, Steve? <laughs> Um, 20 to 70. 20 to 70 is what you want to focus the on? range, yeah. Uh, 20 to 70? Between. How the hell? Your well, subs? Kicker makes subs that, kicker makes subs that like the upper and the lower range. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, the amount of power I have is going to help me produce the low end range I need between the power and cone area. I'm sorry. The cone area I have is going to help with the low. And the amount of power I have uh, is going to really make up for that for that high end and, and i'm building a fourth order as well so uh maybe a little a little different i don't know i don't know what you're building but uh yeah tw 20 to 70 is kind of the what i'm going for kind of you know and it, i gotta give a shout out to deviant like, what here is like what are you expecting at 70 hertz just uh, just just out of curiosity because i know you're gonna have i mean your curve is gonna be how how how, how can the curve produce I mean, there's, there'll be, there's definitely going to be a drop between 60 and 70, but I don't want it to be where when I am playing 70 hertz that nothing's happening. And there's plenty of builds out there where once it gets above 55, the bass just goes away. It's not there What about all. doing, a, like, uh, do you think that, uh, like, a, a, a four-way system doing mid-bass drivers, you could hit, you could, you could su supplement the, that type of frequency range, other people listening, or do you feel like you need your sub to be playing that high? <clears throat> Um, I just I don't think it's not necessarily about needing them to play that. I just think they they will. I mean that that is the range that the, the drivers built to be meant to be played in. So I'm just uh, I guess that that's just the range I'm going to play it in. Uh, I think it, it's going to don't don't get me wrong. It's definitely going to roll off on both of those sides, but uh, the 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 lower end is where I'm, they're going to focus it a little more. Maybe right. 30 to 40 is where the car will be its strongest. Okay. I don't have a long vehicle, so I. I can't really produce a super long wave for, for a 20 hertz, but given how much cone area there's going to be in there, uh, it should still do pretty well. Um, I got to give a shout out to Devia, and of course, he it sounds like he comes from the same era I did. You know, I had to walk up hill to school both ways and and do all that, so I had to give him a shout out there. Uh, yeah, we know what's going on, Devia. Thanks, man. <laughs> the uh, you know you bring that up, and this is a question I want to ask you because back in the the, the days when Kicker. I mean, some of the people watching this feed may not be of the generation understand that, that back in the day when, and not just sound, sound quality was really what started and drove car audio, was that sound quality. And then SPL kind of was, it was part of my score and it's, it's in the SQ part. And then the SPL side just kind of spun off on its own and became bigger and bigger and bigger and became what it is today. But you go back into the day when that, it was not unusual for Kicker to go uh, at a show. We'd be there for support for anyone who's using our products. And we would def, we would take 60 to 80% of the trophies at a, a show. I mean, our brand, you just go through that winning car it's all kicker in it that's all kicker in it that's all kicker in it and i'm not saying that from a braggadocious standpoint it's just that our company has roots in sound quality installations making products that sound good reproduce music and then we also have have our roots and we've got guys that did extreme spl numbers back in the day using kicker products you know these solo x the 10 12 the 18s um so so we have a, so have a history on that but one of the things that our guys always dealt with back in that day is that they always brought in that quarter quarter wavelength rule where they were looking at you know they're trying to get the peak frequency that's up on the dash where the microphone's reading and they want it to be a quarter to wavelength or whatever and then work the formula backwards to decide their tuning does that even play into your world when you do things or with what you guys are doing today trying to hit those lower frequencies are you just looking to how much power and how much cone i can get into an area or, or how does that play in uh me personally i'm not a box designer uh i i do have a good buddy our, our buddy hunter martin hunter martin um who, who knows a lot about quarter wave and sixth orders and uh What's the other one? Helmholtz resonator? Is yeah, that well, that's what a familiar? ported box is. Okay. I mean, it's called a Helmholtz well, resonator. That's, what, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Fancy any, word for port. Yeah, so uh, with this build, it, it probably can be more efficient with a few less subs, 
but but it's it, there's more th there's a sh wow factor you know just stuffing as much cone air as we can um, in power but it, as far as it, it being like the way to to get to those numbers and all that it's it's, it's kind of not it's more of the less is more thing like the car would definitely be louder if I maybe just went with like six twelves uh, on a lot of power. Big if you were focused on just trying to concentrate energy at a uh, high number at whatever yes. frequency on a mic. On a mic, sealed up, playing 65 hertz, not demoing for anybody. But you what know. you're saying, and kind of, and keep in mind that you're uh, muted there, EXO, so when you come back, unmute your microphone. Um, but it sounds to me like uh, EXO and you both are on this page is, yeah, you're less focused on the number. You got an idea where you're going to be number wise. You, you got because you've been doing it long enough. But you're really you're more concentrated on the visceral experience and getting a lot of output in those low frequencies. Which I can tell you from personal experience, 150 to 160 dB of output, 20 to 40 hertz. That's a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. I've been in vehicles and it's, it's just like, whoa, that's I don't know that I need more than that on a daily. Well, the new standard is so high now; it's absolutely unreal. 60 is the new 50. 60 is the everybody's doing. If you're not 60. doing 65. So 70 is pretty much the new 30 and 60, 50. It seems like. That's just crazy. But uh, XO, what's your opinion on that? I mean, uh, do you d worry about math formulas quarter wave, or what's your goals when you're actually designing the enclosure and tuning it? Goes in, in, into it. Okay. Yeah. I oh you're sorry, yeah, I got it in my that definitely that definitely plays a factor into it. I know that we were measuring distances from the back of where the sh the, the shell would end to the windshield itself. Because you actually have to be aware that you can actually be in a node where you're canceling out. You're not just being at a point of amplitude. You're actually canceling a frequency out. So you, it's not always focusing on that because you end up chasing this impedance rise. But uh, I would I would I would say that I would focus on testing afterwards. I wouldn't say, oh, I'm not going to build this if it doesn't reach 14 feet, 12 feet, 10 feet. You have sacrifices. You have limitations in the car audio world. So. Work with what you got, and then if you have to tailor it later on, maybe you can change tolerances at that point, or port lengths, or things like that to get your nodes and your everything the way it's supposed to be. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think the quarter wave and those things are, you're, that's more of an SPL thing. Um, when you're really trying to get the, the energy focused on the dash and you want that quarter wave to hit at the dash's point, that that means more, but say say you you really just want all the energy at the headrest. I mean, quarter wave kind of goes out the window at that point. Right. So, for me, uh, it's just this is a S or extreme demo build. It's sure. Not an SPL. It and is, you've said that from the start. Right. Since you've ever. I've just. It's fun to be competitive and go after numbers. It, it, it always ends up being a thing. Once you get on the meter, you always want it to be a little louder. But, um, I'm I'm not into to competing without trying to win so i'm not I, I literally would probably be in the garage all the time trying to hit that 185 and be the last guy in the world and i don't want to start going down that path because you know what i mean because you got other things in life you want to do too yeah like yeah. golf or this or yeah, that anything, other yeah. things so other things or, something or really have hammy ride with there. you from vegas <laughs> go yeah, i just wanted yeah. to add one more i just wanted to add one quick thing sure like uh about that sacrifice thing i know i keep going back to that but like to do these big builds, there is a degree of cancellation that occurs when having all of these, a huge row of drivers. So it, to, to expect that it's gonna behave the same as a flat wall or the same as other types of setup, like this is a very efficient setup at, on so many different frequencies. I would venture to say that this next build w will sound Oh, not not less aggressive on certain frequencies, but it won't have that flat wall sound because it's going through degrees of cancellation, but it's still building a lot of pressure from that sheer amount of cone area. But there is a lot of cone, is maybe cone filtering is the right word. I'm not sure if that's the right yes. word, but like areas of where you're actually in pockets of zero, not zero SPO, but like less and then pockets yes. of more, like pockets of less. So when you have this huge space, you experience that more. Like like if you're in your living room and you move from side to side and you listen to some some frequencies get louder as, as you move from front to back and side to side, uh, it's the same thing in a car, the bigger space that you have. So there will be a degree of sacrifice due to cancellation. 
You know, it's interesting you bring that up, XO, because you're absolutely right on that. And it doesn't even have to be multiple subwoofers. That just adds more to the mix. You can run yeah. into that same exact situation oh, with yeah. just a single subwoofer in a home. And, and I've been doing yep. this for years. We call it the subwoofer crawl. The and crawl, like, yeah. if you're building... If you're doing a home theater system and you want your bass to sound good for you at your seat, I mean, because that's what you want. Yeah. Here's my home. This is where I watch. I want my bass to sound good here. What you do is put your subwoofer where you sit. So put the exactly. sub where you're going to sit with your chair and then crawl around, literally get down the floor and crawl around the room, around the room, and you're going to find nodes where the bass is louder and you're going to find nodes where the bass is quieter. And when you find that node that just sounds good to you and it's a convenient location that your wife will let you put the sub there, put the sub where it sounds good. The best to you? The wife approver factor? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Laugh completely. You're on laugh. it. XO is my man. Laugh. Wife approval factor. Once you get that approval and it sounds good in that spot, then simply put the subwoofer in that location and you'll have strong bass at your seat. And I've been doing that since, you know, the mid 80s in, in home audio. Is, and we always called it the subwoofer crawl. We just put the sub where the customer is going to have their couch or their chair and just crawl around the room. It's not that we're drunk and we haven't lost our car keys in a vent, thank God. But we are trying to find the best place for the bass to sound good. So what you're saying there, XO, is very valid advice. And what is, when you start adding all those other subwoofers in the mix, you're just adding more points of information. If you were to look at it mathematically, it's now, okay, now it's not just this woofer interacting with this room and creating nodes that get canceled. Here, now I got this woofer that's interacting with the room and this woofer interacting with the room or a car, and the two woofers are interacting with each other. And you can get into some weird, and you're right on it, it's comb filtering. That's exactly what happens. Yep. And you can, uh, you can get cancellation. You can't see it, but when, if you got one wave going positive, the exact same amount of energy going negative at the same time, and they meet, it mauls out, or you, you, you filter. You can get uh, weird things going on. So that's very good information. And good. I'm glad to see you. It's obvious that you know what you're talking about, Exo, and it's good that you bring that stuff up and talk about it because you're, you're focused on and understand that. I appreciate that. Yeah, if, it, if I was building a, a vehicle that was just to chase numbers, um, yeah, finding the quarter wave, uh, where it's going to land, where the mic is placed, may be the most important thing outside of structurally sound. Right. Yeah, because you take guys like uh, Scott Van Riper, he's got two 18s, uh, doing 183 plus. Insane numbers. Two, two 15s, sorry, yeah. two 15s. So yeah, it's uh, efficiency, quarter wave, uh, for high numbers is the key. Hey, Justin, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to, when they're available, I'm going to do my own version of a quad box, except it's probably going to be four separate boxes in my home theater room. And uh, I want to use some L7X15s or, or more. Yeah, never. No. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I want to build a quad box. that I know Derek Williston, Big D over at uh, Williston Audio Labs, he has talked about wanting to take the quad box that he has that he's done demo and unboxing on, and we actually gave away one with him on a show months ago. Uh, and he's thought about wanting to get his upstairs and try it in his home theater room. So we'll have to actually reach out to him and see if he can do that. We'll get him on the show and do some video. But I want to touch on them. I'm watching the clock here. I'm just watching their countdown. Again, I, I try to keep the show right at 9 o'clock, guys, and get our drawing in there. So I'm going to try to be conscious of that. But I want to bring this comment up because you two cheated today. <laughs> You cheated. You did. I'm going to say it straight up. You both cheated today. We did. And the, the reason they cheated, and it goes right into, kind of ties into this question from Flexin 500 is, we actually had today, uh, it was a kind of a special day for us because we got our first L7X15 in-house prototype. Uh, we've approved the 12. It slams. We listened to the 10 today at another meeting. We got that approved. The 15 uh, was in the room, and you guys got to go in and listen to it. And, and it doesn't matter it, whose woofer else was in the room is not relevant, and I don't even want to talk about it because it doesn't matter. It's just it kind of goes down to Flex and 500's question. is He says, Kip and Steve, since an L7 will have 20% more cone area than a comparable round sub, how does this reflect on the optimal box size of the L7? Is it 20% larger than round or more? Hmm. Well, that's a very good question. It really boils down to typically for the same response, you tend to need a little bit bigger box when you got a little bit bigger cone driver, more there. That's typically true. We try to tune the L7 drivers to work in very, very compact boxes. Um, but since they're here and I can get their reaction on it, and this ties into your question, Flexin, and it ties into the question about bandwidth, which is something you brought up about wanting to cover up into higher frequencies. You guys got to hear a round woofer compared to the L7X15. and. What was your impressions? Uh, there's considerably a noticeable difference in output. Um, 
especially in the high range. I think that's going into today, if you would have asked me that question about range, I would have said 20 to 55. Right. But after hearing the sub, uh, 20 to 70, because I heard it playing 70 hertz and it played with, with authority. It's still there, it didn't disappear. So, uh, yeah, that, that was, the main difference was the upper end. Um, it definitely still hit the low notes. It, it hit under 40 hertz, no yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the, the, the high end is, was probably where I noticed the biggest difference. It was, it, it, it was still there. Yeah, that was, a, that was a key thing. I put on, put on, uh, it's one of probably the most infamous uh, bass head songs out there. It really hits all the notes, really drives, uh, you know, to test with the whole band with your system. So I was expecting it to play, you know, pretty much where I thought it was, but that high note, like Steve said, I'm like, okay, that actually hit really authoritative high. And then the low, I wasn't expecting, I was expecting it to not sound the way it did, and it ate it, 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 it loved it. So I was like, okay, okay. So, so I think I think that uh, a lot of people are going to be really impressed when this. Uh, gets I got a quick out question for you. Go for it. Yeah, are you using the acoustical roll off of the enclosure, or are you adding a electrical active? We are using the acoustical roll off of the enclosure, number one, and we put them in. And this kind of ties into Flex and 500's question: is when we do any testing of our woofers. First off, we do them in small sealed boxes. And Steve was like, why are you guys doing this in small sealed boxes? And the reason is, a small sealed box will allow you to stress test the woofer better than any other box out there. Uh, you do a ported box, you're gonna get less cone motion out of it. You do a big box, you, now, you can, now you're not relying on the suspension or you're more relying on the suspension because there is no VAS. No so we do small sealed boxes and it allows us, not just ours, I mean, we look at competitors' products too. I mean, you know, I'm not gonna talk about any of them because it doesn't matter. But we use very small sealed boxes and when we do it, we use the same size box. So, for example, this ties into what Flexen was asking and what you're asking, XO, is we had a round 15 and the square L7X15, and we had them both in, and I don't want to lie to you, but I think they were two and a quarter, weren't they? Yeah. So they were, they were 2.25 cubic foot seal boxes. And they we're still getting the impressive performance that these guys are talking about. But now us, you know, Steve Irby, we're sitting in the back there going, and we're going, okay, yeah, this is good, this is good, but yeah, we got 20 to 23% more cone area. If we would put this driver in maybe a 2.5 or 2.6 cubic foot box, it would have even more low end output compared to the other driver they're looking at. So we try to keep the box the same, and then we know that if you want to get a little more of this or that, you can shrink the box or you can enlarge the box. But we use the same size box, we use it on anything we test, and it's because it allows us to stress test a woofer and find out where is it weak. Because that's really when you're prototyping a driver, that's what we want to discover. Where is it weak? What's it not doing? What do we need to go back and fix? So do you need a larger box with a square cone driver versus a round because there's more cone area? Maybe. It depends on your goals. He heard a round driver and the square driver in the same size box, and as he said, it ate the lows. <laughs> So it didn't have any problem making them. Um, but you could increase the box size probably slightly and get a little more of the lower, lower output out of it if you wanted to. Um, so hopefully that answers the question. What's the longevity John of the Carey, back to Hush, Matt. What is the longevity of the product and does it weaken as years pass? John, Tim actually alluded to that in the beginning of the show and talked about what's going on in the field. Tim, readdress that again. I mean, you've been making the product for how long and how much? How many cars are rusting away with Hush, Matt stuck to them? <laughs> Yeah, Kip, uh, we've been making it for 32 years, and we, we've tested product in junkyards, and the product is still bonded. It's still flexible. It's a synthetic rubber. It's a butyl rubber uh, that we compound blend together. It gives it the longevity. It, it's, it's guaranteed for the life of the vehicle. And it's one of the things, and, and John, uh, Kerry, if you didn't see it in the show, not only talk about the length of it and the amount of time it's been out in the field, so it's been out there a long time and it's durable, is we kind of talked about a story because our own John Myers talked about how literally they sprayed the panel with WD-40 and the hush mat stuck right to it. And, and Tim was actually saying that it actually helps accelerate the bonding. I've used uh, damping materials in the past. I could tell you, if they got any type of oils or something on the panel, it doesn't stick. you got to thoroughly clean that panel to get this stuff to stick and you guys have a product that basically says oh let me have that i'll eat that up and make it even a better bond so that's pretty crazy shout out to hush matt thanks rx art we appreciate that yeah great having tim on the show tonight doing that one more here i see in the feed i want to bring up mike hansen just wondered if there's ever been an update on the warhorse hmm. well mike here's what i can tell you 
We're coming out with big, big subwoofers. You know we are. We've talked about the L7X and what's coming out. We probably need some big, big amps to drive those. Stay tuned. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Let's go on down here, see if we got another question here. I wish some of my old subs had hush mat surrounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, UV and everything. How does it hit? I mean, obviously with what you're saying there, Tim, so hush mat holds up really well to UV. It does. It's, it's impervious. I mean, we, put, we have a UV resistant chemical in our, our formulation that gives it the longevity. I mean, UV has no impact on it. Uh, Juan Romero Jr. here is asking, hush mat on the ceilings in the sun, what product do you recommend? So out of your product line, Tim, what would you recommend on a ceiling? The foil or back roof? damping on the roof skin, the interior side of the roof skin, and then our silencer foam on the back of the headliner, on the back of the fabric headliner. Okay. So there's your answer, Juan. And, and Juan, also, if you have any questions on the Hushmat product, you can go to hushmat.com, hit them up. I'm sure that, and, and Tim will confirm from here, contact information is available on your website. So if they have any further questions, tech support, pre-sales questions, they can hit you guys up. Absolutely, Kip. They can go to our website and they can, they can email me, tmac at hushmat.com. Okay. It's real simple. Got it. Got it. I'm just trying to look at the other things here. There was another couple of questions that ran by here. Uh, I'm gonna bring this one up real fast. Scott from Power Hog. Also, Kip, I want a standalone kicker key. Take my money. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great, Scott? <laughs> I feel you, brother. Kip's nervous eye twitch. Yeah, yeah, I've got a nervous eye say, twitch, and we got to answer him. What's to say under the comments? Uh, Kip, Kip and eight. And eight. Let's see here. Eight inch? Nope. An eight yeah, version, please. Okay. I'm going to bring up. So, so Bobby, uh, we've kind of said, you know, and literally this kicker unmasked live that we did the first one, which was replace SEMA because we couldn't go. And then we've just kept it rolling, turned to this weekly show, which has been really good. Um, we've said that this is not only us telling you information about our products or application or hints or tips or getting special guests to join us live or even over here. You know, we're going to continue to do all these things, but this is a two-way information conduit. And what you guys bring to us here on this show, we take to heart. Um, initially, out of the gate, I can tell you it's a 10, it's a 12, and a 15. People have asked for an 18. People have asked for an 8. People have asked for a 6.5. We're listening. And that's all I can say about that at this point. What I can say is initial launch will be a 10, a 12, and a 15. And keep the comments coming because this is a communication channel. It's not just us presenting stuff to you. It's you guys telling us what you really want from us, and we mean that sincerely. So uh, look for the winks. You'll know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so with that said, real quick, before we roll up the show tonight, Bill, we got some winners tonight, don't we? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Bill, there's Bill in the back. I always wait to hear him over the chime. So, oh, this is, no, that's the big contest for the uh, July 6th. So let's go to here. So we have a winner who's going to get a Sharton on them. And this is thanks to our good friend Steve and Hammy at Sharton on them. <laughs> I, I, I may start liking saying that. I don't I, know. I'm, I'm with it. I, Man, I, you're you welcome. may have to make a shirt for me that just will. says that. I think I got to, you. I'll have to wear it on the show. So third place tonight, you're going to get a $50 gift card to Sharton on them. So you can go pick out whatever base head clothing you like, hats, shirts. What else Keys, you guys like? Shirts, koozies, whatever hats, you want. shirts, koozies, keychains, base knobs, uh, RCA boxes, uh, socks, everything. Backpacks, Every, leggings, anything backpacks, you want. Backpacks, fanny Chardon packs, Auto. leggings, shorts. They got all yeah, the swag. Go hit them up. <laughs> uh, you're going to get that $50 gift card for third place. You're going to get a set of EB300 wireless earbuds. You're going to get a pair of kicker koozies so you can keep your favorite beverage chilled as you hopefully watch the Kicker Unmasked Live weekly show. And last but not least, we're going to get you a gray, and it's over this shoulder. When you're looking at a camera, it's hard to tell which one you're pointing at, but it's that back there. We're going to get you a gray kicker unmasked shirt. I'll say this for all three winners now, and I'll do it when we're in with first place. If you're a winner, we need you to reach out to social at kicker.com. Hey, I'm the winner. What we need from you is your address, shipping address. It cannot be a P.O. box, so please give us a legit address. We can't ship to P.O. boxes. We also need your phone number. Uh, we do not use the number for marketing purposes. We don't sell to them. We're not giving it away. But we have to put a legit phone number on the shipment because whether it's UPS, USPS, FedEx, DHL, doesn't matter who it is, bringing the package to you, if they can't find your location or they got to arrange for a drop-off or you to come pick it up, they need to reach out and contact you. So we have to have that for shipping information. And last but not least, please confirm 
confirm your shirt size in the email. I know it's a drop down box. Maybe you meant to hit extra large, you hit medium. No one wants to see you wearing a medium if you need an extra large. So confirm your shirt size so we can get that for you. And with that said, Bill, give us winner number three on tonight's show. And that is Steve K from Rome, New York. Steve K, you are winner number three. Thank you for playing Steve tonight. Kowalski over there? Oh, uh, you know. Is it Steve Kowalski, not New York, I don't think so. I think he's one of the Midwest. Okay. So, Steve K, you are a winner tonight. Rome, New York. Thank you for tuning in the show. Thank you for being a winner. Uh, reach out to Bill, socialatkicker.com, and also Bill will reach out to you tomorrow. Another thing, guys, uh, and we only have this problem occasionally, which is good, but in the, uh, you know, the rules and regulations contest, we basically give you a week to claim your prize. If you don't claim your prize in a week, you basically forfeit the prize and we draw another winner. So, man, if you enter the contest, be sure you check in to make sure you're a winner and respond to Bill's email. Bill does reach out multiple times during that week process to make sure that you're getting your prize. So please respond to Bill right after the show. So, Bill... Moving along to winner number two, they're getting the same price package, but they're going to get a $100 gift card from Sharton on them. Who's winner number two tonight, Bill? Brad M. From? St. Louis. St. Louis. Brad M. from St. Louis, your winner number two. Thank you for tuning in to the show tonight, Brad. We sure appreciate it. Hope you've enjoyed some time with the guys here from Sharton on them. XO for joining us and Tim from Hushmap. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the prize. <laughs> and then we're going to move on to grand prize. And tonight's grand prize, guys, this is fantastic because now you're getting the koozies and the black limited edition shirt like we normally do. But you're given a $200 gift card. $200 gift card. And guys, that's... He's shitting on him. Foley, that's just <laughs> fully sharting on him. Yeah, that's thanks, man. I appreciate that. Sure. So that's that's legit. Two hundred card. You can get whatever swag you need. And Tim from Hushmat has thrown us in a complete Hushmat bulk pack sound deadening kit. So if you're not like these crazy guys and building an extreme build, but you're just trying to get your everyday ride to have great sounding audio, I'm telling you, sound damping slash deadening material is an absolute must to get your ride to sound good. I'm speaking from personal experience. You need to get it in your ride. It improves how the system sounds. It improves how your car sounds, even if you're not playing the audio system. And it makes your system sound louder because now you're not having to overcome two to four dB of road noise. This is keeping that noise from coming in your car. And now you get your system to sound better and louder. And you get the, the Zen experience when your system's off. So it's nice uh -huh. and, and also uh, sound, or I mean, uh, heat. Heat, yeah. Oh, if yeah. you got it on there, it totally Absolutely. makes your vehicle cooler in the, in the summer and warmer in the winter. It retains it better. So. Hey, real quick, before we announce winner number one, Tim, that uh, headliner material that you recommended for Juan because it's silver back, does that help re reflect heat out of the car or keep heat out of the car? Ab absolutely, Kip. It's, it's one of the attributes of our product. It's both an insulating material as much as it is a sound deadening material. Okay. Well, fantastic. Just since that came up, I wanted to ask you that question. And when you said it was uh, foil backed, it immediately made me think of like the foil backed, uh, you know, a uh, roof material that you put on before you put your signal on, you know, to reflect all that heat. And I yep. just thought it's the same thing. So apparently it is. Right on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So winner number Why one, you got a great. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> We have EXO in the dark. <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> and remember, folks, the next time you need your LED strips to stay strong, use a diehard because he got you covered. Um, but tonight's winner, grand prize, uh, Tim from Hushmat contributing to that. Our guys from Sharton on him here. Who is winner number one, Bill? Whoa, looky Everyone. here. Everyone. Well, everyone, everyone Tim H. But it's Tim H. from Oklahoma City, right here in our backyard. Yeah. So, Tim H., you are literally right here in our backyard. You are a grand prize winner tonight. Thank you for tuning in to the show tonight. Uh, yeah, all the winners, again, we need your shipping address, a legit phone number. Please confirm your shirt size, and we will get all these prizes on the way to you. Did you uh, say we're going to announce this guy, too? Is that oh, true? yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Bring up a sign. Oh. Here, you, you, you like this? Are you ready for this? Hey, Bill! Yeah. Do we got a winner for the contest from Slamology? Tell them what they won, Bill. Tell them what they won, Bill. What, what are they winning, Bill? <laughs> oh. Solo X. Their choice of size? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Their choice of impedance? No. Oh. <laughs> Dual, 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 d
So we are literally, this is, if you entered at Slamology at either the uh, Baseaholic Productions booth or at the Sharton on them booth, this is the contest we're drawing for. Now understand, and, and I'm going to address this question at the very end, guys, so hang on to that. But this, when this is available, we're going to let you, if you're the winner, you're going to choose your size and your impedance <coughs> of what you want in a new L7X subwoofer. And I, man, that's a... That's a great prize. Thank you. Pretty for, neat. Thanks for picking that up on the way to Simology, and thanks for putting those cards up in your booth. We Absolutely. appreciate you doing Definitely. that. Definitely. And sure. so, with that said, subscribe, hit the like button on the way out the door, guys, if you will, for us, and hit that notification bell because contests, giveaways, and things like this, we are in a habit of doing these whenever we feel like it. And if you're not subscribed, and if you don't have the notification bell on, you're not going to know when we post these. Never know what we're going to give away. So be sure you hit that out the door. We appreciate it. As you know, we don't monetize these videos, and we never will. It's not about that. It's just a way for us to know that the content's good, and it gets it out into all your other fellow bass heads, music lovers, cardio enthusiasts, they can see this content. So we appreciate that. So, Bill, who, who's the winner of our Slamology subwoofer in L7X? Roger L. from Freeport, Florida. Wow. Freeport, huh? Freeport, Florida. So Freeport, Florida, Roger L., you are our winner. Uh, reach out to social at kicker.com or again, Bill will reach out to you, uh, email you that you're the winner. And again, anyone who's a winner on these contests, we give you a week to basically reply. If you don't reply in a week, you do forfeit the prize and we draw another winner and we contact them. We've only only had it a couple times, but it does happen. So I just want to point that out. That is important that you guys respond because we got to get these prizes out there. And if you don't, we're going to pull it and announce another winner because we don't want to just sit here and not get used. Rick Simony, good night guys from Texas. Thanks for the show. Rick Simony, he is a good friend of ours down in Texas. Great guy, custom, uh, he has some great custom rod builds. He uh, actually has a, a, a wheel company. What's the name of that wheel company, Tim? Halibrand. Halibrand. It is Halibrand, right? Halibrand. Uh, if you're into some, uh, want some great looking uh, wheels for your vehicle, check out Halibrand. Uh, Rick Simony is our guy down there in Texas, uh, doing a lot of hard work and doing a good job at that. But thanks for tuning in, Rick. Good to see you. I hope to see you at SEMA, my friend, and get to break bread with you. It's been way too long. So with that said, EXO, XO, I want to thank you for joining us on the show tonight. You got any parting words before we call it a night? I'm muted. Uh, okay. Mike. Is he, Mike's needed. I think he's, Thank okay, you very much there you go. for having me. We would love to have you back on the show again, so uh, look for us to reach out to you. We love having you join us. And there, you, you look absolutely stunning tonight in that purple with no Radiant. white light. <laughs> Before you go, XO, uh, when do you think you're going to have your build finished? Do you have a, a date that you really want to get it done by or a show you really want to get it to? Um, uh, amplifiers are in production right now. So they should be stateside within the next couple months. So I, I, I think realistically, uh, it, ruckus and chill, maybe. Okay, so November-ish. Okay, a few months. There's some time still. Yeah. Cool. Nice. <laughs> nice. Thanks for joining us tonight, Exo. We certainly appreciate it. So we look much. forward to having you back on the show. Uh, uh, show. Actually, I'd like to get back on and do another episode with you sometime and talk about exactly what you got going on in your build because I think people find that interesting. Okay. Perfect. Look forward to reach out to you. Thanks, man. Have a good night. Talk to you guys. Thank you for having me. Bye. Yes, sir. Thank you. TXO. Tim from Hushmat, sir, it's a pleasure having you on the show tonight, and I can't believe you stepped up and did what you did. Uh, again, people want to know anything about your product, it's hushmat.com. I know Timmy and the boys are excited to be using your product and all of our builds that we're doing here at the factory. So thank you for partnering with us and, and working with us, especially with such a great product. And uh, man, hats off to you and the whole team for being on the show, and hopefully we can get you to come back and, and do something like this with us again. Chip, I really, I really appreciate the opportunity to be on here with you guys, and I uh, look forward to the next time. And I, uh, I'm just going to take a little ride down I-35 to uh, Stillwater. I'm right up here in Kansas City, so I'm not too far away. I'll tell you, you got to make the ride down here. We'll pick one of these little joints and uh, lunch is on us. We'll take you out. We'll have a nice lunch and uh, we'll take the team in the back. And maybe you can do even a little training with the guys in the back and I can learn something about your product. We'd love to do that. Right on. Yep. Appreciate the uh, opportunity, Kip. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. And we do appreciate everything you're doing for us. And we will definitely uh, see you again here soon. Have a great evening and thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot. Have a good night. You too. Nice like it. So that brings us 
to you. There's just the three of us. To the us. left of me. The you three amigos. Right. And here I am, stuck in the middle with you. Here you are, we stuck in the middle you know? with, with the well, albino well, Oreo here. You know, you, you bring it up, there's always fourth meal, but our idea of fourth meal is BW3s because you can drink your bread. Okay. See, uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. I like to, uh, to get my carb intake in a liquid format, so, uh, you know. I won't lie, Ernie and I really, really, really like the tall shock tops with a few slices of orange down at BW3s. Okay. So if you're in for that. Let's go down. B3 yeah. Trace. Um, it's going to disappoint a few people in the feed because I'm not having a twisted tea, but I think it's going to be a shock top today. We'll, get it. we'll rock it out here. That'll be good here. <laughs> Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the Slamology shout out. Thanks for everything there. We certainly appreciate it. Um, real quick, before we end the show, I know, Ernie, we didn't get to some of the stuff. You've got a video back there that's some speakers going on with Mr. Barber. Would you roll that beautiful bean footage if you don't mind? We're going to use you that. You sound to, just like there it. There you go. Uh, this is a oh. shot of the top of Mr. Barber's Move Air 2, which that's is Explorer. Shot. And this has how many 11-inch cans? Uh, so we've got 12 11-inch cans on the <laughs> roof. Uh, there is uh, four on the driver, passenger, and four on the front. Uh, it's really loud. There's about 4,000 watts pushing them, so it, it, does, it does the thing. So that's, that's <laughs> just a, a little bit of a taste of where you're going with this vehicle. It's not just going to be bass heavy. I mean, it's going to be full bandwidth. Sound great. It's going to be a concert. Yeah, it's a concert. I mean, it's going to have everything. And uh, that's not all for the mids and highs. Uh, the doors are also going to get the full treatment. Not with anything that I saw here. I'm just saying the doors are getting the full Wait, treatment. Yep, that's it. <laughs> but yes, the doors will be also loaded with something, and uh, it's going to be very loud all around, all frequencies. You're under NDA. Two to twenty. You're under NDA. Yeah. They're not. Oh no. Yeah. I, I didn't say what's I going. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm putting uh, CX. Six and a half. Well, oh, so, okay. Yeah, you already have those. Fantastic. Yeah, we do have those. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, or do you? Well, <laughs> lately? <laughs> Is it in stock? Welcome yeah. to the new, it's out of stock. So, yep. but no, seriously, Hammy, thank you for joining us on the hey, show. This I appreciate evening, it for sure. I appreciate it. Mr. Barber, Steve. Can I do uh, one shameless plug out the door? Do it. Guys, make sure to check us out. Shitnotem.com. Shop now, shop later. Appreciate you, Kip, so much for having us aboard. No, you guys are a great, great time. You guys are fantastic partners. We love. I'm, I'm glad that we get to play with you guys out in the field at shows, have a good time, break some bread. Oh, yeah. Do all that. Uh, and then the build you're doing. I can't wait to see that thing completed. So I'm glad they were able to join us tonight. I hope you found the content fun and appealing, having XO and Tim join us tonight. As always, it's my pleasure to be the one in front of the camera looking like an idiot to let you know that Tim, he's behind camera. He's bounced between three cameras, keeping things rocking steady. Tim's back there, uh, or Ernie's back there. He's pushing buttons, so he's got the easy job. Sandy taking the place of JW. Thank you for doing that tonight, Sandy. When you get a chance, you can bring her up and let her get a little final wave in there, Ernie. And as always, we got Bill Frog handling all the social media back there. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Have a great, safe week. Remember, next week we'll be coming to you live from Topeka, Kansas at the Heartland Motorsports Raceway. That is the location of the Kicker Country Stampede. We look forward to seeing you all then. Have a great week, everyone. Be safe. Have fun. Bye. Cool. Fit.